Welcome Canyon Springs. How you doing tonight? And uh, I want to welcome you to our evening fellowship time together around God's Word, connecting with one another. It's good to have uh, uh, an opportunity to uh, be with you once again. And we're just thankful uh, about what God has been doing. Had a great crowd this morning. And uh, I think folks were encouraged and helped, and I hope that you were. Um, but uh, we're going to uh, take some time tonight and uh, just try to be helpful. I always like to be helpful. And uh, some of the things uh, um, <clears throat> in life that uh, has impacted me are when people try to help me and uh, try to help me be successful. Um, I'm pretty sure... <clears throat> many of you, um, the people that I know that are watching tonight and that I rub shoulders with, uh, I probably would say are very successful people. Um, they live their life in such a way that uh, success kind of uh, comes with them. And uh, they've understood over the years how to be successful in certain areas of, of their lives. And and I sure have learned a lot uh, about, um, you know, what are the best ways to be successful? What are some of the principles in life to um, look at? And uh, I've got uh, <clears throat> and all these different things like that. Um, what I want to do is uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and... Uh, I don't know how long we'll be tonight. Um, I was joking with some of the folks this morning in church about how we moved our midweek service on Wednesday uh, from 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And uh, I jo was joking. I said, hey, and it was really nice uh, because uh, many of our people were still awake while I was preaching. And uh, because we were able to move our service time uh, a little bit uh, less at 6 o'clock there. Well, tonight, uh, I feel like uh, I might fall asleep during the sermon. So if I do that, feel free to go ahead and just get off and go to bed. Do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to try not to sleep. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty tired tonight and uh, feel like uh, a little bit under the weather not bad, but just uh, kind of worn down. It seems like it was a long week, and uh, we've all had those, haven't we? Um, but uh, so let's talk for a couple minutes until I fall asleep, right, or something like that, uh, about um, being successful, but really the flip side of that. And uh, what are some hindrances in our lives, some hurdles that we come up to that really hinder us from being successful like our hearts desire is to be successful. But look at Hebrews chapter 12. Here's just a thought tonight, okay? Uh, it says, uh, verse number one, you know this, wherefore, seeing we are also uh, are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Okay, here is the picture that we are in a race in our Christian life, and those that have lived before, that have been successful, those pillars of the faith, are witnessing you and I live the Christian life, and we are encouraged to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, right? <clears throat> now, we're encouraged to do that. Now, I guess the question would be, why do some people fail to reach their goals? Why does success kind of elude some, but yet gravitate to others? What, what is it? Well, probably a variety of reasons. There could be some different things, but I really think the root reason, I mean, if we boil down all the kind of reasons that we might say, I think the root reason might be um, that 
it's inside of us is the reason why we're not as successful um, as maybe we think we should be or we don't obtain or reach any of our goals. Uh, for instance, some would say, well, my upbringing caused me to have roadblocks of life and hinder. And uh, Some would say, well, um, it, it's material things. If I just had more money, I'd be okay. If I, if I just had a, a bigger, uh, if I had different circumstances that were to happen to me, then I would be more successful. I, as I'm thinking about all of this, I understand that there are certain things that do happen to us that do hinder us in some ways in life. But as we're thinking about these, this passage of scripture where it says, the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. We're talking about on our desires to meet the goals that God has called us to. Um, why are we failing to reach those goals? The ones that to live righteously, to love God, right? Uh, to look to Jesus, all of these things. So I think it's inside of us to some regard on why we're not necessarily reaching the goals that we should. That means there's some things in our life, there's some choices that we make. Wait, did I say choices? Yeah. I know that we all wanna pretend it's someone else's fault and there's always a reason and always an excuse and all of these things. But you and I have a choice. And every day, God has given us a free will to serve him, to love him, and also to serve him. And also, as we run the race with patience, we have an obligation to do it faithfully. And what the scripture taught us just a minute ago as we read it, to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. I think there's some roadblocks to success. I think it's, um, I think there's, it can be different things to different people, but I think it boils down to the choices sometimes that we make. Uh, I've seen people in my life, my pastor, Pastor Blue, was a great mentor to me, and I saw um, him making choices in his life and uh, the things that he did, and it caused him to be successful in many areas of his life. Um, I'm wondering, are we getting, Wayne's not having any sound. Can there, anyone else hear me? Are we getting Wayne's not Oh, we're, we're getting sound at the house. We're getting double preaching going on over here, I guess. Um, but sorry about that, Wayne. Um, turn the volume up, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say, but uh, hopefully... Uh, um, it comes back at you. I, I think it's probably the government censoring you at uh, your park. They're not wanting you to hear this message. Um, but we'll see. Anyways. <clears throat> so here we have, um, as I said, I've had a lot of people in my life that I was able to look at that were very, very successful. And... Um, and I'm not talking about money. Money, listen, I'm not even talking about net worth, okay? I'm talking about successful at life. A good father, a good mother, a good friend, good, good boss, good employee. I've seen a lot of good people be successful at whatever their hand uh, goes to do. Now these weights and the sin, um, the weights and the sin that does so easily beset us. What are these weights? Someone said, weights are those things that trouble us. Weights are those things that weigh heavily on our minds, and they cause us to be worried, frustrated, and discouraged. They, these things in life, uh, the accumulation of things, uh, we're concerned about them, we're worried about them, and we're frustrated, we get discouraged. These are the things that really slow us down. They may not be classified in the scripture as uh, blatant sin, 
but they are weighing us down. And then we've got the sin that does so easily beset us, and that's those things that are sinful against God, but they entangle us, they snare us, and they keep us out of the out from underneath the umbrella of God's protection and blessing. And so we miss out on a lot of good, wonderful opportunities of life because uh, we went down the rabbit hole of sin while everyone else went to the field and enjoyed the harvest. Uh, we got stuck. Um, there's some things that we got to put down. The things that we just strip out of our life. There's some things that... Uh, we need to do in order so that we can pursue the goals that God gives us. If I asked you, do you want to be successful? You would say, I want to be successful. And so I want to just talk about tonight, uh, maybe a few, and maybe next time we could talk about some more, but a couple of these roadblocks to our success. And uh, let me just say this. <clears throat> Let me just say this. These are the things that we've all encountered. And I think you're going to feel like these are things that you've experienced. And I want you to be encouraged by owning up to some of these things and recognizing that maybe the reason why you can't do what maybe you want to do is simply just a roadblock that you don't need to listen to. You can go right on over that through the power of the Lord, okay? But if we don't recognize it, we just get into these modes where we are living the mediocre life, whereas God wants us to live the abundant life, okay? And, uh, but so I want to talk about these roadblocks. First thing is um, the roadblock of fear. Fear hinders us from doing all sorts of things. It paralyzes us, and sometimes when we get fearful, we get this... Uh, uh, flight, uh, fear or flight, we run, um, it helps, it, it grips us, it makes us get to a place to where we get bottled up, we're not moving, we get stagnant if you wear, uh, and fears can cause us to flee from our goals. Fear is a thing, uh, fear is the thing that hinders us from accomplishing our goals because we are so afraid of the path that is set before us. Um, we begin to look for excuses when we're not succeeding and they cause us to run from our goals. Well, faith is obviously the opposite, isn't it? The opposite of uh, faith would be living in fear. Opposite of faith, living in fear is living by faith. So faith is that solution to our fear. Um, in order to get over these roadblock of fear, we're going to have to do things in our life to build our faith. This is our problem sometimes. We're not doing anything to build our faith. We live our life depleting our faith. Did you know that just walking in this world depletes your faith? <laughs> Did you know that going to the grocery store is going to defeat, deplete your faith? I mean, you are going to be downtrodden. You're going to be discouraged. I mean, you know what? If you watch the news, you will be depleted in your spirit. <laughs> so understand that you are going to be fearful of what may happen in the future, but you have got to get your eyes off of whatever problem you see or whatever thing you're afraid of. And you got to get your eye, uh, eyes off of yourself and you got to do what verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Look, I want to read to this. Uh, let's go together, if you have your Bibles tonight, Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter number 41. And if you notice here, verse number 10, Isaiah 41, verse number 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So here it is. We are not to fear. Let's live by faith a little bit. And we're not to be afraid of things. And I know it's common, it's natural, it's fleshly. 
to be fearful. But I think it's important to build our faith. As you walk in your faith and you begin to live by the promises of God, your your faith will begin to learn that God is faithful, he is true, and everything that he says he will do. And by the way, that verse says in verse 10, fear thou not, why? Because he is with us, he's with us. So fear is a huge roadblock. I wanna encourage you, let's lay aside that weight that paralyzing type of fear in your life where you don't do nothing for God because you're afraid. You don't hit any of your goals because you're afraid. You don't have any desire to improve your life. It could be just your home. It could be a relationship. It could be anything, but you have no desire because of fear. Some people don't make relationships because they fear rejection. Some people never step out and do any ministry in church because they don't know. Did you know that at, there's always a person that doesn't know until they do know? <laughs> I mean, there's always something that's going to be new in life. And I want to encourage you, embrace living by faith and trusting him. Don't let fear be the roadblock that hinders you from reaching and being successful. Now, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about money when I'm talking about success. We're talking biblical success here. We're talking peace, joy, abundant living. We're talking blessings being shown down, uh, showered down from the Lord. We're, we're talking about, hey, you are in a place that God is blessing. And so we need to make sure that we hurdle that roadblock of fear. Here's another thought tonight. What's happening here? You see, success, there's roadblocks to it. Fear is one. And something really closely related to fear is doubt. You're just not sure doubt it's just really like the lack of assurance you, your lack of knowing what's going on you're just unsure you're doubtful and you're unsteady you you're tentative about everything in life you waver uh you, do, you know you you want to do and to reach a goal and you want to be successful but you just doubt and so guess what you're tentative you, you you're unsteady and you know what you're bogged down and you're going to miss opportunities. What does Hebrews 6 say? Without faith, it is impossible to please him, right? And so you don't have that assurance. I want to encourage you. Ask God to help you get over this doubt. This thing that hinders you from doing and being successful it hinders you from growing in God. And one of the reasons why a lot of people have a hard time with this doubt is because they lack a certain understanding of the scriptures. They lack uh, the knowledge of what God says in his word. And so they just perpetuate their life. They want to do things, but they don't know how, and they're just not sure, and they don't have, you know, they just don't know. And so they live in a constant life of mediocrity. And I just want to encourage you, you don't have to live like that. Because we read in Isaiah that God is with them. He says, don't fear, God is with you. And so maybe we ought to just get on our knees sometime instead of being fretful and fearful and anxious, anxiety and have anxiety attacks and Maybe we just ought to get on our knees and read the scripture and pray and, and say, God, tell me, what do you have in your word today? I want to trust you. I want to live for you. I want to walk by faith, not by sight. See, when we have and we let doubt hinder us from reaching our goals, uh, we are really saying that we're not trusting the Lord because we're not sure 
he can do exactly what he said. And so let me encourage you to do that. Now, <clears throat> tonight we're going to finish up with this thought about um, this other roadblock to success. What is it? It's called <clears throat> excuses. Everybody loves to make excuses. We all have them. We all have ways of kind of figuring out um, if I say this, that will be some type of excuse for me on why I didn't do what I'm supposed to do or why I didn't reach a goal that I wanted to reach. And so we make it. And so uh, one pastor said it's excuse-itis. They called it a disease here. It's interesting. He says it's an infection of self-justifications and excuses that take root and roots away at a person's desire to pursue godly goals. Excuses. It's a disease. Excusitis. Hey, I got excuse for everything. That's just my natural plan. Instead of saying God can, I say I can't because of. I just make up excuses for everything. It doesn't matter what it is. And so uh, excusitis is the uh, blame game. Everybody's got to be a, there's a reason why I'm not successful. There's a reason why. Everybody's got an excuse. Everyone has these things and they want to blame other people. They want to say this situation or, you know what, I'm just not a strong person, we say. You're blaming yourself. Listen, don't you know the passage of Scripture that says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? You are endowed with all power from on high. And now we say, oh, I'm just a weak person. I can't do what God wants me to do. I can't reach these goals that I feel God wants me to accomplish. You're just making excuses. Listen. In Matthew chapter 25, let's, just, let's go there for just a second here. Matthew chapter 25. And um, I want to show you what the Lord thinks about excuses. Matthew chapter 25. And as Jesus is giving us this kingdom passage, look at verse 24. He says, uh, of course... There was the master. He was giving talents out to the servants. And we see in verse number 24, he says, Then he which had received the one talent, remember they had five talents, one, and the other guy had two talents, and this guy had one talent, and had come and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where there is not strewn. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth, lo, and there thou hast that is thine. And so here is this excuse from the master on why he didn't do anything with the talent that God gave him. He gave an excuse. So he tried to blame his master. He said, you know why I didn't do anything with my talent? It's because you, Lord, you are a stern man, I, that you are a hard man, reaping where thou is not So It's because of you is the reason why I didn't do anything with what God gave me. It's because of you. And you need to stop blaming God for why you are not being successful, friend. You got to start saying, hmm, I can't play the excuse game. I can't always say, guess what? The reason why I'm not reaching this goal is because of somebody else. Did you know what Jesus said about this? Look what Jesus said in verse 25, or excuse me, verse 26. He says, the Lord answers and said unto him, thou wicked and what? Slothful servant, thou knowest what I reap, where I sow not, and gather where I am not strong. Thou oughtest therefore have put my money in the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. You should have done something. 
You know, excuses are just that way. Let's not blame anyone else for our own personal failures. <clears throat> um, take that energy that you would use to blame and do something with it. Redirect it. Make it work for you. I mean, listen, how often do we want to talk about, uh, you know, I was at a store. I won't say what store. And they had a cleanup on aisle seven. And you know what I saw? I saw three or four employees look at, look at it. Well, they were just looking at it. Three of them looking at it. And I watched this for just a little while. And they didn't know what to do. They looked around. They didn't know what to do. And didn't know who to call and all of that. And um, nothing happened. Uh, I don't know what excuses they had. Well, maybe, you know, I have a bad day. Maybe it's not my job. Maybe it's not my responsibility. I didn't spill it. Well, I don't care who, who spilled it. Clean it up. It's not that hard to show a little initiative and say, you know what? I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to say it's you need to do it. I did it last time. Now you do it. Hey, it is so easy to get excuditis in our life and it involves, it takes everything out of our life and we need to ask God to help us with that. Listen, Jesus said it was wicked. The servant that made excuses, wicked. So let's not just say, well, that's just the way that I am. Listen, let me ask you, are there God-given goals that God wants you to get and to go forward and to accomplish? I think there are. And I'm challenged in my own life. But I can't make excuses about anything why I'm not achieving them. And I can't let the roadblock of doubt, I can't let the roadblock of fear I can't let this roadblock of me wanting to blame someone else. My mom and dad are gone. They're in heaven tonight. And you know what? I'm a grown man. And I can't blame them for one thing in my life right now. I can't say, well, it's because of my mom. Because of, because of my dad. No, I still blame my dad for my dog. For the dog that he gave me. But that's, that's between me and him, and it's okay. You know, the dog will work itself out, right? But I can't blame my parents. I can't make an excuse to say, well, hey, I'm not reaching my goals because, you know what? They never fed me steak when I was a kid. All we had was bologna. Hey, I lived. I don't know how. I lived. But we got to stop this kind of complaining and all sorts of making of excuses why we can't succeed. Listen, there was a cloud of great cloud of witnesses. It was a great cloud of witnesses and they challenged us. Listen, lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. You got goals to run? It might take a little bit of patience, but don't let the roadblock of fear, doubt, or the sickness of excutitis. Some of you say that three times. I won't because I won't make it right, but it won't get right. But we'll continue to talk about some of these uh, things that really hinder us from reaching the spiritual goals that we desire. Do you want, do you want to, to reach some goals? Well, let's hurdle these roadblocks and let's leave them in the past. And let's run the race with patience. Why? Because we can look forward, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hey, let us know in the comments uh, if there's anything that we can be prayerful about. Let us know if there's anything that we can do. Um, be prayerful. Uh, people are hurting and care for one another. And if there's anything that uh, I can do to be a blessing or help, let me know. God bless you. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. And let's be thankful. We've got uh, some things going on this week. We've got 
people hurting, we've got people making decisions, we've got people in the hospital, we got, and guess what? Let's just lift up, let's ask the Lord to help us be that instrument uh, and that uh, steward of the manifold grace of God, like, like Peter talks about, okay? So let's pray. Lord, we love you. We ask that you meet needs today. I ask that you take care of us. And Lord, guide and direct us that as we want to be successful, we want to do these things for you. Help us to recognize we can't be fearful. We can't live in doubt. And Lord, we, we can't fall into the habit of making excuses for every single thing. Help us to rise above those things and see those things in our rearview mirror rather than right before us. Help us to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Give us a great week, Lord. Bring us back to the house of the Lord on Wednesday at 6. We pray this in your name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Sure do love you. Have a great, great day.